Well, good morning, all. Um, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Very good. May I welcome you all to our service of divine worship this morning. Thank you for coming. And uh, for any who are visitors, please be assured that you're very welcome indeed to our service. And in your name, to welcome Chris Humphreys. Chris, you're very welcome again to Loch Gaul. And we look forward to your ministry to us during the service. But thank you for coming. And I want to thank the music makers, although they seem to still come to an abrupt end. <laughs> but thank you very much, folks. Now, I'm not sure where they're coming up. Um, no Sunday school in Kinnigo this afternoon, but uh, back to normal next Sunday. The mission envelopes for January here are for Shane McGloin in Portugal. Uh, with ECM. There's no meeting in Derry Crew Mission Hall tonight. Wednesday the 4th in Kinnego Hall is the men's meeting with the Reverend Peter Smith, director of Loch Gaul Parish Church. And on Thursday night the 5th, it's a PW women's meeting with the Vassian Judith Suarez here in our church hall. That's on Thursday night at 8 o'clock. Both meetings at 8 o'clock. A whole lot of paper here. Then um, I want to mention again, as we have done previously, the Hope Explored meetings, uh, which will be taking place on the 11th, 18th, and the 25th of January in the Church Hall. And uh, the format is a cup of tea or coffee on arrival. A short introductory film introducing the main theme for about five minutes. And then there's a short discussion around the theme, which will take about 15 minutes. Then following that, a uh, teaching film from a passage in Luke's Gospel showing how Jesus fulfills our longings by fulfilling God's promises. And that should take about 20 minutes. And the format is sitting around tables. Now, I think these are all the announcements, but we're going to have that short DVD of Hope Explored uh, on the screen just now. So, thank you, guys. A feeling that lifts your head and pulls you forward. These days, hope like that often feels hard to come by. Maybe you've experienced your share of disappointments, but real hope is what the Christian faith claims to offer. A joyful expectation for the future, based on true events in the past, which changes everything about my present. Hope Explored is a three session series for anyone who is looking for a hope worth having. Whatever you do or don't believe, this is your invitation to explore, to discuss, to question, to discover. This is Hope Explored. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here with you this morning as we meet together to worship the Lord. Happy New Year to you all as well. Great to be here again. And I wish you all a very happy and blessed and peaceful 2023. Thanks to Jim as well for the welcome uh, this morning. Good to be back here in Loch Gaul and to be able to open up uh, God's, uh, God's word. As we come to worship uh, the Lord this morning, let's read together this psalm, Psalm 100, um, as we worship him. Let's read together. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. His faithfulness 
to all generations. It's wonderful to come into uh, to church this morning and to worship the Lord with this wonderful passage of scripture in mind. A reminder of the faithfulness of our God, a reminder of the goodness of our God, particularly as we start a new year together, 2023. A great reminder to worship the Lord, to make a joyful noise unto him, to serve him. And a reminder that he is faithful and will continue to be good in this coming year. We're going to stand to sing our opening praise together. We're going to sing two pieces, hopefully. Um, All glory be to Christ and you're the word of God the Father. Let's stand to sing God's praise.
Thanks to those uh, leading us in song this morning. Let's come uh, before the Lord in prayer. Let's bow in his presence and pray together. Our Father in heaven, Lord, it is good to be here in your presence this morning, worshiping with your people. We thank you for the great privilege and joy that it is to be with your people as we meet to worship you, Lord. We thank you for the joy that it is to come into your presence in the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, Lord, as we've been just singing, Lord, that you are the author of creation, that you are the creator and sustainer of all things. We thank you that you are a powerful God. And as we read even at the beginning of our service, Lord, we thank you that you are faithful and that you've not only been faithful in the past, but you are, you're faithful in the present and will be faithful in the future. We thank you, Lord, that you are good. And as we begin a new year, Father, we thank you that you are never changing, but you're the, you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you that you're constant in our lives, Lord. And we thank you, thank you that we can call upon you, even this day, through prayer. Father, we thank you for your presence with us this morning. We thank you, Lord, that as your people gather to worship you, that you draw near in a very special way to bless us. And we thank you, Lord, for this special presence with us this morning. Lord, we praise you for your Son, our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that we have a great go-between, a great mediator, our great high priest. Lord, we've just celebrated Christmas time, in celebration of the sending of your Son into the world. Your son who became like us, Lord, in our humanity, yet without sin. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus identified with us in our humanity, Lord. He was born in our likeness and yet took our place on the cross of Calvary so that we could be redeemed and set free from sin. And Father, as we come before you, Lord, we're mindful, Lord, that we are sinners in need of grace, that we are sinners in need of your forgiveness. And Lord, we confess even this morning that we sin against you in all sorts of ways, in our words, in our actions, in our thoughts. Lord, we confess those sins that are very blatant to us, those things that we do which are very clear to us. But equally, Lord, we confess before you even now those things, Lord, perhaps that we do, and we don't even realize that actually it was sinful. And Lord, even in this period, perhaps this moment of stillness and silence, Lord, we confess before you that which is upon our own hearts and our own minds even now. Lord, forgive us our pride and our selfish hearts. Forgive us for the times in which we run after things which we think will bring some sense of lasting joy and satisfaction. But in reality are but straw and grass which will one day be burnt up. Forgive us for running after fleeting things, Lord, rather than seeking your glory and your honour. Father, though our sins be like scarlet, We thank you that you've washed them as white as snow in and through the cross of Calvary this day. And in this we thank you for our loving Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that we can come into your presence even now because of Christ, because of his righteousness, Lord, that was given to us, Lord. Lord, we deserve no good thing, but yet you in your mercy lavish your love and your grace upon us. And so, Lord, we're thankful as we gather here this morning. Father, as we come to worship you even now, we pray, Lord, you take those things upon our minds and hearts that maybe are distracting. Perhaps we're thinking ahead to what will be come, what will be this week, or maybe the coming week, or maybe the coming months or years ahead, Lord. And we just pray as we come now, Lord, that you silence our minds and hearts and give us time, Lord, to focus on you. We pray, Lord, you help us to understand the richness of your word this morning as we come to worship you. Lord, give us ears to hear and give us receptive, soft hearts to understand what you're trying to teach us this morning through your word. Father, come by your spirit. Presence yourself with us, we ask, for your honour and for your glory. And in Jesus' name, amen. If you have a Bible with you, um, or you have a suitable device, um, do look up with me. Ephesians chapter 3, 
uh, verses 14 to 21. We'll be spending our time in these few verses here this morning. Ephesians 3, uh, verses 14 uh, to 21. Ephesians 3, 14 to 21. This is the word of God. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that ye may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. And we thank God for this, his precious word. Good to see some boys and girls here this morning. Happy New Year to each and every one of you too. And I hope you're all well. hope you all had a great Christmas. Hopefully there will be a picture come up on the screen, boys and girls. Um, as the text we just read is a little bit about prayer. So we're going to be focusing a little bit on prayer this morning. And I want to share with you some thoughts about what Paul says in this wee text in Ephesians. So hopefully there will be a picture that will come up. And you'll be able to help me and tell me what these are. Can anybody tell me what that is or what these things are? Yes, go ahead all the way at the back. It's a phone. Fantastic. 100%. Can anybody tell me what we use phones for? What's the main thing that we use phones for? What do we, do? What do we use phones for? Yes. Calls. Fantastic, yes. We use it for calls, yes. We use it to keep in touch with people, don't we? To communicate, to talk to people, to keep in touch. Maybe some of these phones look a wee bit old. Maybe some of you have phones. Or certainly your parents probably have phones as well. And phones come in all shapes and sizes. And what do we use them for? To keep it in contact, to communicate with others, and to talk uh, to folk as well. What about when it comes to God, boys and girls? What about when it comes to God? Do you think we could call heaven? Do you think we could call God up? in heaven and talk to him no we can't do that sure we can't god has given us a much better way to talk to him hasn't he and he's given that through prayer the privilege and to talk to him in prayer absolutely and prayer is a much better way and in fact the bible text that we just read this morning boys and girls in ephesians is a prayer that paul prays for this church or these churches in ephesus and there's a few things boys and girls i think that we can learn from this prayer that we can take out to help us learn a little bit more about prayer and the first thing is boys and girls that we've just read and they want us to think about is that firstly we have a loving father in heaven who answers our prayers that's how it starts that's how paul starts his prayer he says for this reason i bow my knees before who before the father we have a loving father in heaven and boys and girls it's good to know that we have a loving father in heaven some of us might have uh, earthly fathers as well who look after us, who provide for us. But God is so much more powerful and abundant and he provides for us in all so much greater ways that we can't even imagine. God is the one who has the most power in all of the universe. And yet he cares for each and every one of your lives and for each and every hair on your head. Boys and girls, God cares about you. So that's how this prayer starts. This prayer shows us that we have a loving Father in heaven. The second thing, boys and girls, I want us to note as well, is that this prayer shows us that we need God's help. If you've put your trust in Jesus today, do you think you can live for Jesus by yourselves, boys and girls? Do you think you can live for him on your own without any help? Do you think we could do that? No, not possible. And that's why we need God's help to live for him. We can't live for Jesus by ourselves. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. And that's why Paul, in this wee text, prays for power and for strength by the Spirit to come. We need God's help to turn us, to help us turn away from sin, those things in our lives that, that we do so often. We need God's Spirit to help us understand what's right and from what's wrong. We need God's help to help us to obey God's word and God's commands to help us to live and act the way that pleases him as well. So we have a loving Father in heaven, for sure. Prayer reminds us as well that we need God's help. And the last thing I think this wee text shows us is that this prayer, boys and girls, answers our prayers in ways 
we can't imagine. There's a good picture of apples as well. We're in Orchard County. And the boys and girls, God holds our whole world in his hands. He is the most powerful being in the whole universe and he keeps and sustains everything, all of creation in his power. And he's able to do so much more than what we ever ask or think. In this wee text, there's a wee verse. And you know what the, you know what the wee word is in the verse? It's abundantly. Abundantly. Other versions will talk about immeasurable, but it's abundantly. And I thought this wee picture of apples kind of summed it up. There's an abundance of apples. Maybe some of you are, are, are maybe wishing they may have less apples this year. But certainly there's an abundance of apples in this photograph. And it's the same with God. In a sense of boys and girls, when we come to him in prayer, when we ask him for things in prayer, God can do so much more than what we think or what we ask. So don't be afraid, boys and girls, remember this, don't be afraid to ask God for the difficult things. Don't be afraid to ask God for things that may be, maybe you think in your mind, oh, do you know what? God could never do that. That's impossible. Nothing's impossible for God. So don't be afraid to bring all sorts of things before him. So this year, boys and girls, let me encourage you, keep praying to God, keep bringing your prayers to God any time of the day in the quietness of your own heart. Ask your mum and dad for things to pray for. Ask them to teach you, to show you how to pray. And remember that nothing is impossible or too difficult for God, but that we have a Father in heaven who loves to hear us and loves to answer our prayers. Hopefully we're going to sing again now our next uh, wee item of praise. Uh, we're going to sing um, You Crown the Year um, as our next item. We're going to worship the Lord with our offering this morning and then after that the children's church um, was in the minor hall. Let's worship the Lord with our offering.
the prayers of intercession this morning. I want to remember all of our organisations that will, God willing, start back up again in the coming week. I um, also want to remember this uh, Hope Explore course uh, that Jim announced this morning as well. We're running the, running the same thing over into Torn too, so we'll pray for that, that that will be a blessing to both churches. Um, and I also want to remember uh, as well uh, the, the mission envelope, I think, for this month here in call is DCM for Shane in Portugal. Remember Shane in prayer uh, too. So uh, let's bow before the Lord and come before him in prayer. Father, we bow once more in your presence this morning, Lord, as we come to you in prayer. And as we've just been singing, Lord, what a wonderful reminder it is, Lord, to be reminded, Lord, that you answer us with awesome deeds. Lord, that you're a God who responds, who answers our prayer powerfully, and as we've just read before, even in Scripture, much more abundantly than we could ever ask or think. We thank you, Lord, for your power at work among us. We thank you, Lord, that you are an awesome God, beyond our comprehension, but yet at the same time, Lord, you care for us and you're intimately concerned with the smallest details of our lives. Lord, you are this God this morning as we come to you in prayer. I want to thank you and praise you for who you are. Lord, we bring before you this morning the many organisations of our church that will recommence, God willing, in the coming week. We pray for the many leaders. Lord, we pray that they've had a little bit of a rest, Lord, over the past weeks, perhaps that they have known some sense of refreshment and some sense of your strength over the, over the past days. And as things restart here for another season, Lord, another term, Lord, would you grant them much wisdom, much perseverance, and grant them a joy, Lord, as they seek to serve you um, on a weekly basis here at Loch Awe. Lord, we're mindful as well for the Hope Explored course that God willing will be running throughout a few weeks in January too. We pray, Lord, that we would be even thinking now and considering who we might invite along to that, we pray, Lord, that you place a burden upon our hearts to pray for people, Lord, and to think of those who we might invite along. Lord, we pray that the people, Lord, who we know, Lord, the people maybe we work with, the people who we kind of cross with on a daily basis throughout life, we pray that these people who don't yet know you would come to know a real hope this year, would come to know the living hope that is found in Christ Jesus. And Lord, would you burden us, Father, to be that witness, Lord, to be salt and light wherever you have placed us this day to offer that hope to these individuals, Lord. Not to be ashamed, not to be afraid, but rather to be bold, to go with the boldness that you give us in and through the Spirit and to offer to them the precious news of salvation. Lord, we're mindful, Lord, of this past year and for those perhaps who have lost loved ones, those who grieve, those who mourn this day. We pray for those for, for perhaps whom the last year has been particularly tough and difficult. We pray, Lord, for your peace to be upon these people's hearts even this morning, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you, as the God of all comfort, would bring a sense of comfort and peace upon their hearts and minds. We pray, Lord, that you would grant an assurance of your presence daily, Lord, upon their lives, that they would know strength beyond all comprehension, and that you would minister, Lord, on a daily basis, Lord, your grace to them for each and every day. Lord, help us look forward even to this new year, Lord. Regardless of, what was in, regardless of what happened last year, help us to look forward to this new year, Lord, with expectant hope. In the hope, Lord, that you are our saviour. In the hope, Lord, that you presence yourself with us. And in the hope, Lord, that you are powerful and can do all sorts of wonderful things. Lord, as we consider the world around us, would you pray for our government at this time? Would you pray for those who seek to legislate and, and bring all sorts of laws into our land? We pray, Lord, for those who lead us, that you would give them much wisdom and grace in these days. We pray, Lord, as the government seek to deal with even the cost of living crisis, Lord, and all of, well, and all of the, the, the kind of the turmoil and, and the upset that has been caused by the pandemic and, and Ukraine and all of that, Lord, we pray for much wisdom and a sense of a steadiness upon the leaders of our land. We pray, Lord, that you give them your mind in all of this too, Lord and that you help them make wise decisions that are based off you and off your word. Remember as well, Lord, those who serve you this day, Lord, those who serve you in our own land here, in Northern Ireland and, and the Republic, and equally those who serve you further afield in all sorts of mission fields across Europe. And we pray particularly, Lord, for Shane, Shane McLone, Lord, who's currently serving with ECM up in Northern Portugal, serving alongside Fernando and Villarreal Baptist Church. 
We pray for Shane, Lord, that you would enable him, continue to enable him with his language ability, that you would strengthen him and that you would encourage him as he seeks to bring your word of God on a weekly basis to some of these churches in the north. We pray, Lord, for his own studies as well as he completes MS studies, that you would help him and bless him and give him time, Lord, uh, set apart, Lord, to, 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 to concentrate and to commit to that period of intense study. We pray, Lord, that all of these, these pastors there, for Fernando, for Shane, for Elsio as well, um, as they seek to, to minister, to plant, Lord, to encourage, Lord, and to challenge many of the believers that, that are part of these churches in Villarreal, in Leo Mil, in Braganza, in Shavs, Lord, that you would be unto them all that they need, that you would give them much wisdom, Lord, and much strength for the days ahead. Lord, Portugal, Father, is a dark place. It's a place of much evil and spiritual darkness. And we just pray for your spiritual protection upon each and every one of these men, Lord, and their families. We ask, Lord, that you guide them and that you direct them in all their ways. And that you be unto them, Lord, all that they need. Father, burden us to pray, Lord, for your work globally even this day. Burden us to pray, Lord, that your gospel, that your word will go forth upon all of these nations, Lord. Burden us to pray, Lord, that salvation would come upon souls, Lord, even this coming year. We thank you, Lord, that we still live in the day of opportunity. And we just long and pray, Lord, for your kingdom to be extended, for your will to be done, and great things to be accomplished in and through your good and perfect will. Father, as we come now, Lord, to your word, we ask once more that you presence yourself with us. We ask, Lord, that you would teach us, that you would instruct us. We ask, Lord, perhaps that you would challenge our hearts even this day too, and that you would show us, Lord, um, your good and perfect will even through this text. Grant us ears and hearts that are open to you this day. We pray all this for your name's sake, your glory, and in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. If you have a Bible or a device, do follow along with me. We're in Ephesians 3, uh, like we read earlier, Ephesians 3, 14 to 21. As we focus on this wee passage this morning. <clears throat> Tim Keller, pastor, a well-known pastor, preacher in America, founder of the Redeemer Network of Churches, once said this. He said, to pray is to accept that we are, and always will be, wholly dependent on God for everything. There is something about prayer that confesses our need for someone greater and shows us our need of a higher power to come and help us in our every need. And this morning I want to focus our attention for a few moments on one of Paul's prayers to the church in Ephesus. Ephesus is situated uh, in kind of modern day Turkey. Hopefully there'll be a map to show you. And during Paul's ministry, kind of his missionary journeys, he visited Ephesus several times, a couple of times. And as, as a result of his ministry there, people turned to faith and came to repentance in Jesus. And churches popped up around this area. And so Paul writes his letter to groups of churches in this area of Ephesus. And these churches, the people that came to these churches as well, were a real, a real mix of people from all sorts of cultural background. At that time, Ephesus was a bit of a metropolis. It was kind of like the London or Rome or kind of New York of today in that sense. And um, the churches were made up of both Jew and Gentile believers. This real cultural mix of people. And his prayer, I believe, um, in this wee text that we have there this morning, is simply he writes to these people, Jew and Gentile, and he prays that, they, that these people would become a fit dwelling place for Christ and comprehend the dimension of Christ's love for them. That's what he prays, that they would become a fit dwelling place for Christ and comprehend the dimension, size, and vastness of Christ's love for them. And as we as Christ's church begin a new year together this morning, I thought it would be good to look at this prayer for a few moments, and in particular, kind of draw out a couple of things, a couple of aspects that might help us as we seek to be a people of prayer, even this year. So I want to firstly kind of look at three things. Firstly, I want to look at Paul's approach, how he approaches prayer. And then I want to think about two things that uh, are kind of two aspects of what he actually prays for. So firstly, let's look at how Paul approaches prayer. He approaches God as a loving and glorious Father. He begins, verse 14, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened with power. Paul, at the very outset here, recognizes God's power and authority. 
He kneels in reverence before the Father and recognizes that God is the creator of all and every family on earth. Sometimes we easily forget just how stunning it is to call the supreme being, the creator of all, the governor of the universe, Father. The Aramaic word that Jesus used for Father was Abba. It's a term that we don't obviously don't use today as so much, but it's a term that really speaks of intimacy. There's an intimate relationship going on, but it also speaks of a respect. And Jesus knew that, that when we pray, the first lesson on how to pray is understanding not how we pray or maybe focusing on a specific technique, but actually prayer begins by understanding actually who we pray to, our loving Father in heaven. And Jesus taught us how to pray this even in the Lord's Prayer, our Father in heaven. So goes the opening line of that well-known prayer. And as God's adopted children, even this morning, we have the privilege to speak to our Father in the name of the Son by the power of the Spirit, knowing that he's more powerful, loving, and wise than anyone else. Note with me too in this text that when Paul prays here, he recognizes that God responds and answers according to the riches of his glory. He recognizes that if the, if the Ephesians are to change, if the Ephesians are to change and they become more like Christ and they're to change their behavior, then this isn't going to happen by any effort of themselves or by what Paul writes, but it's only going to happen by the power of the Spirit. And so Paul, humbly, Paul comes humbly to his Father in heaven in whom there is power and authority in spades, and he responds to the prayers of his people out of the richness of his glory and power. I wonder when we pray today, what images or ideas come to mind when we think of our Father in heaven? Do we think of him as someone who is kind, patient, generous, always available? Or do we have other ideas of a God who maybe is distant? Of someone who's maybe bothered by our prayers and only answers them when he's in a good mood? What's your view of God the Father as we begin a new year together this day? Are you assured of his goodness and grace and expectant for what God might do this year? Or do you find yourself maybe that you've become a wee bit indifferent? Maybe even a wee bit suspicious of the Father and how he does things. Because perhaps we think that our prayers go unanswered. Christian, if you find yourself in that place this year or even today, bring yourself back to Jesus and to the fact that the Father sent him to be our mediator, our go-between. Remind yourself of the goodness of God, that you have a Father who created you, who knows you by name, and he wants you to be in a relationship with him through his son. Remind yourself that God's ways are the best ways. And that God knows all things and responds according to his good will for us. He never breaks his promises. But by his grace and abundant mercy gives us what we need. And Paul's approach to prayer is very much recognizing that he is a father who loves him. And who is glorious and who responds. But what does Paul pray for? I think we can pull out at least two things from this text this morning. Firstly, Paul prays for power so that Christ may dwell in their hearts. Verse 16 to 17, he prays that according to the riches of his glory, like we said, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Now the Apostle Paul, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> like most writers, has a particular writing style. He tends to kind of pile truths on top of each other brick by brick. And so if we really want, want to understand, we have to try and break it down a wee bit. Paul prays that these believers would be strengthened with power through the Spirit. Now when we think of power and strength, our minds usually go to all sorts of things, don't they? It might even be a piece of farm machinery, a piece of tra maybe a tractor, how many horsepower it has or something else. Maybe even goes to your favorite gym routine, how much weight you can lift or bench. But look here where Paul is praying for this power to take place, this strengthening to take place. It's on the inside. It's in our inner being. This is not power to be paraded around, but rather an inward, 
<clears throat> excuse me, an inward invisible power of spiritual convictions by the Spirit. But why does Paul pray like this? Look with me at verse 17. He prays that they'd be strengthened with this power so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Now that's a wee bit curious, isn't it? When I was preparing this, I thought to myself, that's a wee bit strange. Paul's writing to Christians, Jew and Gentile believers in Ephesus, those who have already trusted in Christ and those who already have the Spirit of God dwelling within them. So why is he praying that Christ would dwell in their hearts through faith? Why is he praying like this? Well, Paul is not praying that the Spirit of Christ will come upon them or arrive upon them and fill them for the first time, but rather that Christ would come and make himself at home in their hearts. He's praying that Christ will come and settle down in their hearts by faith. Many of us like a wee holiday now and again, don't we? We like to travel. Whether it's for work, going on holidays, there's something nice about seeing different places, different cities and countries and enjoying new experiences. And in one sense, the world is kind of getting smaller, isn't it? There's flights to all sorts of places most days and there's loads of places to stay. There's hundreds of options. But I wonder, have you ever noticed how the way we stay in a hotel or an Airbnb or a caravan or whatever it may be is different than the way that we live at home? In a hotel or Airbnb, we're only there for a few days normally. We don't put our clothes in the wardrobes or set out a lot of personal items. And we generally kind of live out of our bags or live out of our suitcases because we're only there a short time. But living at home is different, isn't it? At home, everything has its place. We hang our clothes up. We set things out so that we can easily find them. Hope most of the time. We have our own bed and belongings. And we're more settled because we know that we're there to stay. And in the same way this morning, Paul is praying that Christ would come and in a way make himself at home in their hearts. He's praying that Christ would come and dwell there. And that these believers would be empowered by the Spirit so that Christ would be more and more present within their hearts and within their lives as they daily put their faith in him. It's this settling, this being at home that Paul is praying for here. I wonder today, as we begin another year, what are the walls of our hearts like this morning? What has taken up residence in our hearts over this past year, this past month, or even over the past week? I wonder, could we make this our prayer this year, that Christ would take up residence and settle in our own hearts more and more? I wonder, could we pray for a work of renovation and renewing of our hearts today, that Christ would remove that old wallpaper of pride and selfishness? and replace them with humility and grace. That he would repaint the dark walls of those fears and anxieties that so easily rise up within us with the bright colours of hope and life. And that he would replace even the sinful mats of living for our own desires, our own pleasures, and renew them with those that honour him. None of this necessarily takes place overnight. And that's why Paul prays for strengthening with power here. Not that these Ephesians would become famous or successful or anything like that, but that these Christians would have renewed hearts, clean hearts, and be a fit dwelling place for the King of Kings. I wonder, could we make that our prayer today? To ask the Lord to strengthen us as we come to him so that Christ would dwell upon us, would dwell in our hearts, and to help us to live, to act, and to think more and more like him. We've talked about how Paul approaches prayer. Talked about how he's prayed for this, for our hearts to be this dwelling place of Christ. And the third thing I want us to think about this morning, or the third thing really Paul prays for, is that he prays that these Ephesians would know the love of Christ and the fullness of God. Second half of verse 17, if you're following along with me, says this, being rooted grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. Paul not only prays for Christ to make his dwelling in their hearts, 
but that, they, but that they would also know the vastness of Christ's love for them. The sacrificial love of God shown in, in Christ at the cross and experienced daily in our relationship with him is like soil that enables this faith to grow and flourish. And Paul prays here that these Ephesians would appreciate and know, not just in their minds, but with their whole being, the vast scale of this love. We're even given a few dimensions here. Breadth, length, height, and depth. And the beauty of all this as well is that we understand these dimensions, this breadth, this length, this height, more fully with all of the saints. Isn't that a beautiful picture? This love is far too vast, too high, too great, too deep, to be able to be understand it on our own or by ourselves. And so Paul says, you understand Christ's love more fully in a realer sense with all the saints, with each other as the church. It's a beautiful picture. We understand it most effectively when we are together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Paul here isn't content that these believers are just rooted in this love when they became believers, nor that they just grasp this idea of God's love in their heads. He wants them to know this love in a fuller sense, this love that surpasses knowledge, so that, as he says here, these Ephesian believers would be filled with all the fullness of God. A good way to think about this is maybe to think about an ocean. Scientists know that the deepest part of the ocean, fun fact for quizzes, the deepest part of the ocean known as Challenger Deep, a gorge in the Pacific uh, that is seven miles deep from the sea surface, one mile deeper than Mount Everest is tall. And because of the crushing pressures of the water down there, very few people, very few scientists and machines have been able to go down and study what actually exists there. But even though we don't know fully what lies at the depths of our oceans, we still want to enjoy swimming in them, don't we? We still want to enjoy surfing on our waves and even diving down to see what's underneath and to see all of the life that God has made. And in the same way this morning, Paul prays here that these believers would consider the vast dimensions of Christ's love and then live daily in reassurance of it. He's praying that they would consider the vast dimensions, the breadth, the depth, the height of it, and then live daily in the reassurance that they're loved. So that despite their shame of sin, despite the hostility of the world, and despite even the lies of the devil, they can remain confident of the gospel, swimming in the bottomless ocean of Christ's love. They will never fully understand it. We will never fully understand it. But yet as these believers meditate on what Christ has done, and who he is. And as they experience this love through the fellowship of believers in a thousand little different ways, they will experience, as Paul says here, this fullness. The fullness of God. It takes God's power to live by such confident faith in Christ's love for us. And I wonder, do we have that same confidence like Paul had today? If you know Christ this morning, are you living daily in the assurance that you're chosen? Adopted, accepted, covered in Christ's righteousness. Is the fact that God has set his love upon you, motivating us to live obediently to his commands and the confidence that our sin has been dealt with? Or I wonder, have we become maybe a bit complacent? Thinking that actually we can live whatever way we want, doesn't matter, because Christ is going to love us regardless. What ways could we help each other as the church this morning to know this fullness of God that Paul's bringing for here? Is there a way to serve one another in all sorts of ways, practically, spiritually? Are we learning to put aside those hostilities? Are we seeking unity and giving each other the benefit of the doubt in disagreements? Do we pray for each other? That we would each know a sense of God's dwelling and fullness even this year. All of this is a spiritual work. All of this is a spiritual exercise. And that's why, just as Paul did, we need to ask God for power and strength to be able to do it. As we close our time together this morning, it's fair to say that Paul reaches some spiritual heights here. I certainly haven't prayed a prayer like this before, and he reaches kind of these spiritual heights. 
And maybe you're thinking like I was when I was looking at this, is all this possible? Is it really possible to know the fullness of God that Paul's talking about? Is it really possible for our hearts to become this dwelling place that he's talking about here? And I think that's why Paul closes this at the end of his prayer the way he does. Verse 20 and 21, if you're following along, he says this. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power of work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus. Paul recognizes that God is able to do immeasurably and abundantly more than we can ask or think for his glory. And I think that we word think there is important, he says, than we ask or think. And I think that's an important word. And you know why? Because I think sometimes, or there's some situations, but we think that God could never do such a thing. When we think that God could never answer such a prayer. So we never ask him. Instead, we doubt. We believe Satan's lies. God isn't powerful enough. God's too busy. He'll never answer that. And that's why he says that God is able to do so much more abundantly than we ever ask or think. I wonder, do you know this reality personally for yourself today in your own heart? That God the Father spared no expense in sending his son so that we would know salvation, hope, and life. I wonder, do you know that for yourself today? If not, ask the Lord to help you respond by placing your faith in Jesus. But whatever lies ahead in the year to come, friends, may, may we be confident of this. That God loves us. That he sent his son, our saviour, to die for us. That we have the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is our hope. And God can do so much more abundantly or immeasurably than we ever ask or think. May we be enabled to pray all the more boldly because of this. And because we have a loving Father, he loves to hear us pray and responds out of the riches of his glory. Let's pray together. <coughs> Father, our heart's desire this morning is that we would become a fit dwelling place for you. Father, would you enable that, Lord? We realize, Lord, that this is a spiritual work, a work that is only done in and through the power and strength of your spirit. And so we just pray, Lord, as we come to you this day, that you would give us hearts that love you, hearts that seek you. And hearts, Lord, that are bold and expectant even in the face of prayer. <coughs> Lord, as we come to you in prayer this year, help us to be expectant of what you might do. Help us to be hopeful, Lord, for what you might do. And help us to serve you and glorify you with all our strength, for your honour and for your glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we close our time of, of worship this morning, we're going to close in prayer, our close, our close in song, and uh, we're going to sing How Deep the Father's Love for Us.
now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. According to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations and forever and ever. Amen.